Hey guys, Lotherly here for Christmas Mini 2022 Bear with Wings, Angel Teddy Bear. I don't know what to call it. It's gonna be this this little one here. Little so cute. Um Yeah, I kinda wish I had a way to ask you guys, like, hey, when I do this pattern, what should I call it? Then I feel like it's gonna become like, you know, oh, Saint Humphreys of Bonaparte. Yeah, yeah I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Angel bear, bear with wings. Teddy bear with wings. Red Bull gives you wings. I'm losing my voice a little bit, so you know, I am Batman. <laughs> I'm just making it worse by talking, so I'm gonna go cross stitch now. All right, so I have to tell you guys beforehand, David and I both have the flu, so there may or may not be a bunch of coughing in this video. It's not my fault. And it's not David's fault either. We got it from someone else. We know who we got it from, but I'm, I'm not calling them out. They don't watch my videos anyways, it doesn't matter, but still. So yeah, we uh, the 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 movie, or at least the first one that we're going to be discussing, we watched the first half of it like a year and a half ago. There was an emergency; we had to stop, and we were watching it with our friend Robert. <coughs> so until we could get him, and all three of us wanted to watch the movie, <laughs> we couldn't watch it. So it was sitting in our DVD player for like a year and a half. Not being watched. And I just want to say, every time he came over, I wanted to watch it. I was not the problem here. The problem was the movie. Yeah, it, yeah. It's a Japanese movie. Which is not a problem whatsoever. They, they, the kids were really good actors. But it's, it's basically... Hunger Games meets... Squid Games. Squid Games. <laughs> Which, like, it wasn't... Th so, this... It's older, right? Yeah, yes, it's older than Squid movie, Games. Or, sorry, the manga that this movie is based on, and I believe the movie itself, are older than Squid Game. And there was yeah, 2014. There was a brief kerfluffle in the media. I don't know how serious it was that, oh, they stole this from that. I don't know if the actual writers were claiming that Squid Game stole from them or what, but that was why this kind of made the rounds was like, oh, well, this was doing it first. And the answer is no, they're not the same thing in like 99% of the ways. There just happens to be a death game that's basically red light, green light played at the very beginning. And that's the end of the similar. Well, I guess they're all children's games being played for life or death. But Yeah, but these ones are actually played by children. And Squid Games was played by adults. Run by you know, just everything else is different. Like, yeah, yeah, and just yeah. everything. So weird. The concept is that just suddenly one day a kid's in class and then there's like this weird doll at the front and then it plays a red light, green light with everyone and if it catches you, you explode. Everywhere. As beads replace your blood, basically. Yep, it was super um, weird. And then there's, so to be clear, it's a horror comedy. Um, <laughs> it's literally a satire of like all these tropes and it's based off a of manga, and it's really obvious with how some scenes are shot, where, you know, you get the person explaining everything, which works in a manga page where, like, time can stop. Well, that's that person's internal monologue. And it feels really weird on a screen where it's like, okay, yeah, I get this is their internal monologue and time stop, but why are you doing this? You don't need to explain this to me. I can see it happening, you know? Yeah, it, like, versus you need that internal monologue for a manga because you yeah. can't see everything that's happening in that moment. Right. They and can't animate it. <laughs> plus, it just mentally, the way your brain pieces it together, it usually works better. Yeah. So either way, there's this big moment where the jerk in the class and the protagonist, like work together and figure out how to solve the game and beat it and that yay so they're going to be working together to solve this movie and then the, the other, other person explodes because you only get to have one survivor in the first game yep um it's just very you know it's lampshading a lot of stuff um and making fun of it and uh what's the second game the cat in the gymnasium yeah that one was a choice yeah i mean basically <laughs> it my was an animated cat CGI, yeah. <laughs> yes i mean it's 
it's not even that great of a, oh, let's just get drunk and watch a movie and laugh at how bad it is choice. It's just... I, like, I, it, it's not the worst thing I've seen. And the manga concept is maybe kind of interesting. Like, I, I would maybe actually read the manga. Yeah, um, that's what I was thinking. But, like, I'm not recommending anyone rush out to watch this or anything. If this is, you know, your sort of thing and you want to have a dumb movie night, it's a... It'll definitely get everyone going, what is going on? <laughs> yeah. um, there are a variety of moments where you're like, huh, didn't see us going in this direction because there was absolutely no indication of that beforehand, but here we are now. There's a floating cube in the sky. Yeah, cube, sky oh, cubes. And... There's a guy that thinks he has to save the world. Yeah. And his room is cautioned off with tape and... His mom will leave things outside his door. Yeah, because he's... And the... there is no resolution to that. <laughs> yeah, because that's later in the manga, I'm sure. It just, it's, it's very... It's not a good movie. Um, I mean, I didn't hate it, but I'm not going to rewatch it. No, I, would, not, I, I would rewatch Squid Games, though. Yeah. I would rewatch The Hunger Games. Yeah, it's... Battle Royale is still one of my favorite books of all time. <laughs> I'm not the even going to bother good. to go through the plot because the plot is so wacky and nonsensical that it doesn't really matter. It's just basically an excuse to set up dumb jokes, which work okay. They're, they land pretty well. Um, there's definitely moments... Well, yeah, it, its greatest ability is that it's dumb enough that when it's being really dumb, you just let it be really dumb. Like, when the clear sociopath person on the team isn't killed in a certain scenario, you're like, you know what, yeah, that tracks, because... No, I was really angry about that, because he straight up kills another student, because they're like, oh, we only need seven people, but we've got eight. So he just breaks the kid's neck, and everybody's just like, oh, okay, and like, they move on pretty quickly from that. And, and then later on, they all have the opportunity to be like, yeah, you know what? He killed somebody. Let's just get rid of him on the off chance that he's definitely the one screwing us over and being evil. Yeah. And then they don't. Because... And then he continues being evil and screwing people over. Yeah. And I was really annoyed about it. Because, like, I, I like to think I'm not a horrible person. But if I, some, if I saw somebody just cold-heartedly do that... Without knowing whether it's actually a problem to have one more person or not, because they did not know, and for all we know, it wouldn't have mattered that they had an extra person. It could have been better for them. <coughs> uh, and I had the opportunity for somebody else to kill him instantaneously, like no pain, no guilt for me. I would do it. I would absolutely do it. Safer that way. The whole thing is <laughs> Just dumb. saying, like, I am going to survive a horror movie if I'm put in one. I've seen enough. I'm going to survive. It's fine. <laughs> it's... Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's just stupid in so many directions. And it's... There's the, like, this is dumb because it's supposed to be dumb, and then there's this is dumb just because... I feel like this is one of those cases where I can see the signs of, like, this person wrote something... And it maybe caught on more than they expected. So they had maybe like 10 chapters worth of material. And then suddenly they're expected to have 200 or 30 or mm. 50 or whatever. And either it wasn't great to begin with or maybe, I don't know, just the point being that there there's things that are just not handled very elegantly. Now granted, the point of it is not to handle things elegantly. It's not like yeah, this not is like trying to... But there's stuff that just is... It's, it's, it's just um I mean I like I haven't looked into the manga at all. Do we know if it's like the same tone anything? Oh, I would assume it's exactly the same tone. I don't know about it. I mean that's else. the thing we're making an assumption. I am 99% it may not be. positive it is for a variety of reasons, but <laughs> yeah, um I've point. seen serious manga have things that look super funky and weird like that cat. <laughs> it's not the funky and weird stuff like the cat. It's the little, the literal plot point of like, there's a, like, a, what's the word? Neat. You know, that's the guy in his bedroom who like watches nothing but anime and has body pillows. And, uh -huh. Yeah. As a kid, like that is absolutely a choice that was not put in by a producer somewhere that is in the source material. Mm. And that makes it very obvious. This is not remotely serious. Um, they might have a better, you know, take on all of it, but, you know, again, it's just, uh... <clears throat> it's Hikikomori. Yeah. A Hikikomori who has been watching them from his room goes out of his <coughs> house, possibly to find the real identity of God. Uh, <coughs> 
pulling inward, being confined, also known as acute social withdrawal. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's it's not the worst movie I've ever seen. No, and but like, it's not as the far best as movie like, I've okay, ever this seen. is so ridiculous, it's fun. It has those moments, but it doesn't even keep that vibe going forever. There's definitely moments where it's like, okay, I just don't care anymore. Like, this scene is longer than it. That movie was long. Yeah, it was there, like two and a half hours or something? Or I it just know. felt like it was yeah, that long. Yeah, it was, it absolutely had no right being as long as it was. That's another thing. Especially because it's not like they could have fit all the content they were going for anyways. Um, yeah, it just, it's... Yeah, it just it, everything is a mess. Um, well, the manga genres are psychological thriller and survival. I feel like it should include like comedy or something. Yeah, but that's just the problem with comedy stuff. Is you don't get it tagged and whatnot. Like, who's according to whom? You know. Okay, how about satire? Yeah, satirical. I don't know. It could be serious. Um, All right, what else are we talking about? Yeah, okay. I, mean, I don't, yeah, I I don't think say, I have much else to add. I like, I don't have more on that either. Um, uh, I was kind of annoyed by the almost love triangle, but they they kicked that in the butt pretty quickly. That was nice. I mean, yeah, but then it was. Oh, it was kind of silly. It was weird to like, even introduce it, given how they like. Yeah, how quickly they got rid of it. that other girl. Yeah, and none of that served any real point other than uh, again, it was. It felt like the author was like, well, I can't just keep doing the same gag over and over, which, yes, they could have. And so instead they were introducing, like, love triangles and things like that just to kind of keep things fresh for a bit. And then, okay, now that's done. Here's the next thing. I've seen that happen before. I, I, I'm guessing a lot here. But, yeah, no, it just... The manga might actually be very good. I could totally see it being good. There's a whole bunch of ways that could be good. But that I mean, movie was not... <laughs> Usually it has to be popular enough if it's going to be made into a movie. Yeah. But I want to add you guys. The cat was animated just it was it was it was dreadful, okay? It was it was creepy, it was dreadful. But the polar bear. That polar bear was yeah. awesome and that fish was probably the best part of the movie. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Those two loved it. Loved it. Yeah. So if you want nothing else from this movie, if you Google, like, as the gods will, polar bear, you will get a very fun animation. And it was, and it, it isn't a smooth animation. Like, he moves very jaggedly. I don't know if that's the word I'm looking for. Jerkily. Yeah. Like, he jerks around a lot. But it was super cool. Yeah, it was I great, liked it. Yeah, that was, like, and that's the thing is that, like, I think the cat was purposefully bad CGI. Like, not that they had the budget to do a giant moving cat or that there's any way to do that and not have it look like uncanny valley cgi like, yeah there, there is no way to make that look natural but, but that's at the why same it works time, so great with the polar bear because he wasn't yeah. supposed to and that's why well, he did move i weird. think it worked with the cat because i think the point was to make it look creepy weird and unnatural like mm. i don't think they were shooting for well we'll try to make it as good as we can and fell short i think they were shooting for it's gonna be weird anyways this is all weird anyways it's gonna look weird because it's like a yeah porcelain giant cat it's not even a normal cat like it doesn't have True. fur yeah no it looks like lucky cat yeah kind exa of. It, yeah exactly so i mean yeah it's just it's a mess um so it was looking, a choice <laughs> looking at our list of options of things that you don't want to talk too long about um we watched who's killing the great chefs of europe recently oh okay so one of the we recently had thanksgiving dinner with dj's family and his cousin no yeah cousin matthew yes is going to school to be a chef so i was telling him and his mom i was like yeah i think you guys would enjoy this movie first off because you know there are cooking jokes and stuff that definitely went over my head and i'm sure the two of you would actually find funny but even beyond those i still had fun with the movie and that's when Judy actually became interested because she was like, that's when you know a movie is good. When you miss some of the jokes, but you still walk out of it happy that yeah. you watched it. So, uh, honestly, one of my biggest gripes was it didn't have captions and yeah. I misunderstood a lot of what people said or just misheard. I couldn't tell what they said. But 
still walked out of it happy I watched it. It was a good movie. So related to that, it's an old enough movie and not a popular enough movie that it's actually on like the archive.org streaming. So that means it's free to watch online. So if anyone's remotely interested in this movie, you can watch it like right now. Just search Who's Killing the Great Chefs of Europe streaming and it'll be like the third or fourth link. It's based on the <coughs> book. <coughs> yes. Uh, the concept is it's a murder mystery slash rom-com. <laughs> um, yeah, legitimately. Yeah, uh, yeah. The came out, I want to say, in the 70s. Um, oh, I thought it was 60s. 60s. might be 60s. Uh, early 70s, late 60s is what I would peg it mm. at. Um, that, uh, the plot is that there is, there are basically three main characters. There is a man who is this world-renowned food critic, uh, and he is sort of like, you know, it's kind of like getting a Michelin star, having him say, you make good food, like, he's a very well-renowned food critic, mm -hmm. who lives in various places throughout Europe, uh, because he's always traveling around trying all these great foods. And so he lives the posh upper lifestyle, and he's, like, helping plan the queen's dinner at the start of the movie. Mm -hmm. um, you know, who's going to be which course. <coughs> and so there's a variety of amazing chefs on this, and then there's one of them who is the dessert chef, and she is a beautiful and very talented dessert chef. Um, and an American woman, I think? Or is she British? I legitimately don't remember. Yeah, but either way, the other main character is her um, ex-husband, ex who is an, an American entrepreneur slash sort of chef, who is basically one of the running gags. Is of course, she yeah. is in the highest of high cuisine, you know, these very fancy places and whatnot, and he's the kind of person who thinks, you know, what would be good right now? McDonald's. Um, and he that's wants to open an egg restaurant. An omelet restaurant, yeah. <laughs> that's what it was. But he claims that he wants it to be less <coughs> fast foody than anything else, and that's why he's talking to her, like, hey, do you can one of your buddies... Who's really good? Do they yeah, want to maybe cook for me? Be, be my head chef and get me, you know, slightly better recipes. Like, it's still going to be cheap and yeah. fast foody, but it'll be quality cheap fast food, not literal just, like... Junk. Pre-made eggs that are reheated. And yeah. Yeah. Um, so, first of all, it's, it's, uh, for, uh, I'll just throwing it out there, it's a little dated on the, uh, handling of their relationship. Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah, but... But, it's even, there, there are bad. movies made nowadays that yeah. I'm still annoyed with. Yeah. Honestly, my biggest problem with this is, as soon as I learned they were divorced, I was like, gosh dang it, this is gonna end with them getting back together. I'm so sick and tired of movies where people get divorced and then they get back together. I'm just, I'm done with it, well, okay? Well, to be fair, this one was doing it first. Probably, <laughs> but I just, it's it's especially with, like, world-ending movies yeah. where it's like they had a traumatic event, which, I mean, they did have a traumatic event in this one. They did. So it kind of just, but they did still have chemistry, at least, and the yes. traumatic event that brought them back together wasn't a world-ending traumatic event, so I'll accept it. Yeah. But. So the vibe of this is a little bit of, um... Oh, it's that one I love that I made you watch with the newspapers. His Girl Friday. Um, all lots of fast-talking, quippy people. Uh, lots of crazy, over-the-top personalities. The chefs are all from various eccentric. countries. They're, yeah, eccentric, you know. <laughs> um, Italian, French. Uh, oh, God, a couple of other countries in Europe. I can't remember. But, you know, not full-on stereotypes, but def just definitely, like, ridiculous over-the-top. Yeah, yeah, actually, a, a little stereotype. <laughs> Um, and that's half the fun of it. Is yeah. It's just like, the movie really, it, 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 first of all, being an older movie, it takes its time getting to the point. There's just a nice long setup of introducing the characters over the course of this, getting the queen's dinner set up. Yeah. Um, and I'd say it takes like 15, 20 minutes to get through that whole bit. Yeah, I think um, so. And then eventually we get to, uh, the plot which is, oh my gosh, someone killed the chef who made the breaded pigeons for the di dinner. And they kill him by stuffing him in his oven, kind of in the same style that his pigeons are made. Mm -hmm. And so, first of all, she's sleeping with him. Um, so, of course, the ex is now a suspect. She's now a suspect. So there's our intrigue. Um, and uh, he... <laughs> it just, like, the way they talk about it... So the police are interviewing her, 
And they're like, do you think it could have been anyone he hired? And she go, oh, God, no. And they're like, how do you know? He would have fired anyone who overcooked meat that badly. <laughs> like, it's just That's right. very <laughs> tongue-in-cheek, silly, ridiculous. Um, lines like that are why you watch the movie. Yeah. So it's, it's very absurd. There's a wonderful scene of all the French chefs invited together <laughs> because they have to figure out who's going to be killed next and they refuse to acknowledge that any of the other French chefs are there because how dare they even be mentioned to the same name as me and then at the same time they're all terrified they won't be murdered yep, because that, that means they're, they're not, not the best yeah <laughs> you know they're, they're like the, the the shame of surviving you know? <laughs> so right. it's very wacky and it's fun and i highly recommend it to most people like it's just dumb fun especially if you do any cooking at all uh it'll be a little funnier just because you'll get it and like the the <laughs> it, it's extra funny because like each chef is being killed in the style of their food yeah the <laughs> lobster guy was drowned in his lobster, lobster tank, tank. <laughs> yeah um, and so, like, one guy <coughs> is, like, completely freaking out because his specialty is, like, flaming chicken livers, and another guy's specialty is pressed duck, and just, like, they're all, of course, these horribly violent ways to die. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a good movie. It's a fun movie. There's really not much more to know about it. Other than, like, don't think about it too hard. It's not that kind of movie, but... Uh, it's good. I recommend it. Yeah, if you want a dumb, fun, rom-com mystery, it, it, it hits all the good points. It was, like, what, the halfway point was when I was like, oh, was it this person? Mm -hmm. And you said yes, and then I was like, uh, he never tells me the truth, so it wasn't that person. No, I told her yes, like, four times. Yeah, I on because record, you I'm always like, just go, I don't know, I don't remember, I'm not like, gonna tell you. Oh, was it so-and-so? And I go, yeah. Or, like, I hesitated a moment, and I'm like, well, she'll just get upset, so I was like... I, at first I'd said something non-committal, like, you know, ooh, wouldn't you like to know, or whatever. Yeah, and, and then it, I was like, well, it would make sense, because blah, 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 blah. And then and, you were like, yeah, they did it. And then you were like, well, did they? And I'm like, yes. And they're like, well, did they? And I'm like, fine, back to non-committal, because apparently you won't even take yes for an answer. So I'm like, wouldn't you like to know, or whatever. Because you never give me a yes! I gave you a yes! Yeah, that's the thing, you never do! So, I and wasn't this used to it! is how you break a person. Screw you! <laughs> My favorite character didn't die in this movie. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's. that's but yeah, I got it, and I yeah, and there was a logical reason for that why the person did it, and it made sense. So I appreciated it. Honestly, I think I walked out of this one liking it more than Murder on the Orient Express. I could believe that, but again, I feel like. Well, whatever. I mean, I was just... We've already discussed that one on yeah, this show. I know. So I just... I, I just... I do not understand. I, I, I understand your dislike of it in some ways, but also I feel like it's sort of like being... It's the old Seinfeld isn't funny. Like... Seinfeld? Sein, yeah, Seinfeld isn't funny argument where it's like, well, yes, that's because it kind of pioneered a lot of what people do. And so... I don't know. I feel like Murder on the Orient Express, which I'm not going to spoil, does do its solution very well and very elegantly oh and yeah i just like i got it really early on and i and then i just but did you actually I was put just it annoyed together about or did it. you just well i i i don't even know if you could have with some of them you absolutely could have yeah uh, there's a couple of major hints like it doesn't matter what they're like i think there were a couple that i was like oh this and this and this and then the, i i just figured yeah this because that yeah <laughs> the, the short super version weird, is I bet. <laughs> It was a genre savvy thing. Yeah, like, well, it, because I know the genre, I know yeah. what to expect and what to look out for. And especially, I watched Murder on the Orient Express before I was as genre savvy as I am, and I thought it was a great movie. So I don't yeah, know that's what I was going to say. Of... Actually, like if I had seen it like two decades ago, or just you know a decade ago, probably would have enjoyed it. More. And I still appreciate it because it delivers on what it's going for very well. Like a lot of movies try that kind of solution and they twist. don't pull it off at all yeah whereas that one it really is very elegantly well not elegantly it, but it's very well pulled off so, <coughs> speaking of murder on the orient express though david and i have been watching 30 rock and there was an episode literally yesterday that was very murder on the orient express-esque that's because literally she's watching the movie murder on the orient express during the episode and i pointed it out to david yeah. and i just want to point it out point it out to you guys because i know things 
This has been... There are times when I very much like Liz Lemon. And there are times when I really hate her. And I really hope I'm not like her. Just saying. Alright. I will, I, will, I will stop the video now. <laughs> and that is the end of Christmas Ornaments 2022. Bear with wings? Teddy bear with wings? I don't remember what I called it. Um, I got two hours and 42 minutes of footage. How cute is she? She's so cute. Um, I literally have less than two hours left on the Codexa Alera book I'm on of Jim Butcher's. Which means if I work on another one gonna have to start the next book but it's already 1 30 it's gonna get dark eventually I'm super enjoying it though like it's it's really good if you guys read the Dresden files or were interested in them Codex Alera, also by Jim Butcher really good so far haven't even finished the first book but I'm getting there <laughs> Yeah, I don't really have anything else to say. So like, subscribe, share, comment, all the jazz. See you guys in the next video.